Today we're going to look at 10 ways that interior designers can help lower the energy usage of a home. So these are things that you have a say as an interior designer, maybe not always to actually physically make the changes, but you can always propose these changes. And these are definitely things that you should be thinking about anyway, as a designer who's doing layouts or somebody who is proposing finishes for uh, the interior. Uh, especially interior architects and even if you're just doing decor such as window furnishings so these are things that can impact a huge um, or hugely impact the energy usage of any home or even a workplace so um, these are worth considering at least thinking about and potentially proposing to a client Creating an airlock between the front door and the rest of the house can actually really, really reduce um, the amount of cold air or wind and um, hot air entering the house. The door or any other fenestration is a weak point, so it's um, not as well insulated as the areas as the walls are typically. So it's it's where a lot of drafts can come through. And you'll notice that in some uh, locations around the world, this is pretty standard practice to make sure that the entrance vestibule is separated from the rest of the house. So um, in England, this isn't standard practice. So this is one way um, you can create a really practical entrance that uh, does more than just um, leave uh, have somewhere to leave all of your uh, shoes and all of the messy bits that you uh, put aside when you enter the house. Window finishes. So this could be curtains. In this location, we've decided on window shutters and the air gap in between the window and the shutter when it's closed allows for um, almost like an area of insulation to um, protect the inside room. So from the outside temperature, so what you decide to put on the windows really can have an impact, a big impact on um, uh, the energy usage inside and how much you heat the inside of the broom. Finishes. So what you put, what surfaces you put on the floor, the wall, as well as the ceiling can make a really big difference to the temperature of a room. Um, something that's highly reflective will obviously reflect light and heat. Anything that is very matte will obviously not reflect um, in a mirror-like way. So these are things to really consider um, inside when you're designing these spaces because they can impact the energy usage of your home. Artificial lighting. Obviously this one is pretty obvious, but uh, most people design lighting with um, the practical purpose in mind as well as obviously mood lighting and um, things to enhance the space. But there's a little bit more to it because the type of fitting um, is really, uh, it will place a huge part in the amount of energy usage that you end up um, uh, using in your home. So for example, tungsten bulbs will, uh, if you're adding up all the wattage of um, all of those bulbs, you might be using um, close to you know 500 watts in one room whereas especially if you have a lot of lighting and it's a large room whereas uh, uh, LED lighting um, LED strips and low voltage um, uh, LED uh, light fittings that you can replace into a traditional uh, light fittings such as down lights will all uh, kind of compound to make sure that the overall usage in one single room comes down. So when looking at a specific light fitting, it's important to consider all of the lights in the room um, and how they all come together and the actual overall usage of that room. Low energy appliances. I know sometimes it might feel wasteful upgrading something that isn't broken. But overall, when you think about, um, especially fridges, how bad they were for the environment, um, especially with um, CFCs and all of the gases that they used to be built with, refrigerants and coolants and things. So 
upgrading a fridge specifically is um, something that will hugely impact um, your energy usage in the home. Obviously other appliances such as um, ovens that don't leak energy when um, they're on um, and microwaves and things like dishwashers that use a lot less water. So these are things that are an investment but they do all come together to really make a big difference to the energy usage of your home. Breaking the floor plan. So most people these days feel like they want open plan spaces, but sometimes the making the decision to keep rooms closed or keeping doors so that you have the option to close off rooms does allow separate areas to be used and um, it can help with more things than just energy usage, such as sound or smells, especially from areas like kitchens. So sometimes, not always, it may make sense to break the floor plan rather than keeping it open plan. Heating systems. So this is something that not all interior designers can propose. However, it is something that will make a huge difference to energy. So this is also cooling as well as heating. Um, includes all of the elements, including perhaps a boiler or um, radiators and all of the bits and pieces in between. Also the length of runs from the initial um, location and placement. So again, this isn't something that everyone could propose, but um, well, not everyone can make these changes. However, you can always propose these as a solution and um, it's always worth thinking about. New windows and doors. So obviously this isn't something that most people would think about in terms of interiors, but it is something you can propose because it makes a huge difference, not only to the interior air quality, but um, to obviously the energy usage. And even if you already have double glazing, uh, it might be time to upgrade it because things like the seals might be gone. So air tightness might be a big issue. We obviously in our house had um, old double glazed windows, which were absolutely perfectly fine, except for all the seals had broken and blown. So uh, we did have to replace a lot of the windows and doors. Triple glazing might also be something that is relevant in your area. So something worth considering. But again, it's just an overall thing that you can propose because it will make a big difference. Locating rooms intentionally. This is one that all interior designers can have a huge part to play because where you position a room, if you're doing an interior layout or where you um, position uh, an activity, so a living room space as opposed to a kitchen space, might be, uh, well, plumbing will have a lot to do with it, but if you are free to locate um, something near a window if you need light during the day or something where the sun is setting in the afternoon and there's a little bit more heat potentially might be the right place um, for a, a space that gets used in the morning rather than in the evenings unless it's an exterior space. So where you're locating rooms makes a huge difference to the energy usage of a room because for example during the day if you need daylight or natural daylight um, and that is an option to uh, locate a room where the most natural daylight is, uh, then it makes sense to do so. Otherwise, um, you might be wasting energy by putting on all the lights by needing, because the area that it's located is in a dark area of the house. So these are things that you do have control of as a designer, and it's definitely things that you need to consider. So here we have 10 different ideas for how to reduce the energy usage in your home with interior design. Um, things like uh, window furnishings, uh, thinking about the layout, where you're positioning things, things even like heating windows and doors and creating airlocks. So if you have ideas I'd love to, uh, to continue the conversation under the post and um, I hope that you will consider using these ideas even if uh, they're just thinking about on your next project or if you're confident enough to actually propose it on your next project. I'm Jo Crowback, I'm an architectural and interior designer and the CEO of the Interior Designers Business School in London, uh, where we help interior designers get into the field or to um, start a career in interior design.